A useful operation to have under your belt when you're working in the Linux operating system is the ability to search through the operating system and searching using our pipe operator as well. So we're gonna demonstrate a few examples of how we can kind of comb the operating system to find certain files, find certain directories, find certain commands. So one typical thing you're gonna to wanna to do along the line is you're gonna to wanna to be able to find out where does a certain command live, right? Where does a certain file live? So there is one way, if we're looking for a command in particular, and we know what the command is, we have a really handy tool called which to search. So if we use which, and I'm gonna pass in the command git, because I know git is a valid command, and I press enter here, you're gonna see it actually gives me a nice path to user, bin, and git. So which is an awesome command anytime we need to use um, a method in order to find a known command. Right. What if we're just trying to find references to Git though, like files that reference Git? Maybe there's even one more Git command hanging out in our operating system. How could we do that? Well, we can use the find command as a way to find different um, file names, right? And different commands. So one way we can use find is if we CD, I'm gonna CD to my root directory here actually, okay? And I'm going to type in find, I'm gonna pass in the argument iname, Okay, which is just case insensitive name, and I want to find the uh, file git, right? And I'll press enter, and we can see right now it's actually searching through the whole file system to find this thing. And you can see right here, right, it did find a var lib git right there. Um, it found there's our user bin git we were looking at earlier, right? So we can see a lot of places it find. What's just as interesting as the things we found are the things that we were not able to find. So you'll see the vast majority of these were actually searches inside of places that we didn't have permission to, right? Like we can see like inside this proc directory, right? There's probably a bunch of stuff in there that's operating system related that it doesn't want us touching. Sometimes that can be just as valuable as finding out where we found the information, right? So that's one way to use the find command. Another good way to use it, if I go back to my home directory, and I'm actually gonna CD up a directory here. So I'm in my home directory, the home directory, not my home directory, right? I'm just in slash home. Is I can use find to do kind of like a, what's called a wildcard search. So let's say I just wanted to find all files with the .txt extension, right? So what I could do here is I could do find and I could do slash home, excuse me, home. So I wanna look everywhere's inside this home directory and I say the type of thing I'm looking for is file types and the name is going to be, and inside these double quotes, we'll do star. And that star is called a wildcard operator and basically that means it can be any number of characters as long as it ends with .txt. So I'm gonna use this find command and in theory, we're gonna filter down to find just txt files that live anywhere underneath this home directory shell, okay? Sure enough, there we found something inside of our DA129 directory. We found our file 1.txt nested inside my files. And that's the most important thing here is note that it did do kind of a nested search everywhere down below that parent of home directory, right? And again, sometimes it's just as interesting as what you find is what you don't find. We see a lot of instances here where it's referencing that it cannot search inside of that rapid user. Right. It can search inside of DA129. If we do an LS here, we didn't see any errors for VCM. So we can safely assume that it searched inside VCM. It just couldn't find anything. So now we kind of have an idea, hey, there's something going on with that rapid user that is in fact a little bit different. So that's one command that we can use is that find command. Again, very good for finding something somewhat obscure. Now, what if we wanted to search inside of a file? So we're, here we're searching the whole file system, right? We're searching inside of directories, we're searching inside the file system. What do we want to do if we got to search inside of a file? So here we have this ipsum.txt, okay? What I am going to do is a command called grep. So I'm going to type in grep, and as I type in grep, I want to give it something to search. So I'm going to grep just the string like ls, and I want to grep it inside of this ipsum.txt. And what this is going to do is it is going to return the line that has that value on it, right? So here is this ls right here, 
right? Um, let's do another one. Like, see where it says Jack right there? We're going to do the same thing, but instead of LS, I'm going to put in Jack. And sure enough, we're getting more lines. Now, note just for reference, if we cat out this whole file, that even though it looks like we're getting a multiple line result, we're actually only getting one. Like, this whole thing here is just one line. It's just the width of the screen and the font size is limiting that. So when we're doing this little cat ipsum.txt right here, actually not the cat ipsum, the grep thing, we're only getting back lines where it has that matching um, value on it. So that's a really good way to use grep in order to search through a file. So you can use find to search the operating system for files. We can use grep to search files for lines that contain a matching pattern. Another powerful tool that we can use when we are searching is the pipe operator. So what's the pipe operator? Well, if you look above your enter key, you're going to see the backslash, and you might see a symbol there that you may have never noticed exists there before. It's a straight up and down character, and that's called your pipe character. When we use pipe, what we're doing is we are taking the output of one thing and we're using it as input in the other thing. So. As earlier, when I did cat ipsum.txt, we agree that that produces an output, right? It produces this output. So when I take and I search, let's say I'm going to search blue here. Here's another way I could grep this file, is I could take the output of ipsum.txt, and I could do pipe, and then grep, and then what do I want to search, right? In this case, I want to search for blue. So you can see this actually has the same end result as when we just did a direct grep. The difference is here cat ipsum.txt produces a textual output. And that we take that output, which is on the left side of the pipe, and we use it on the right side of the pipe as input, right? So basically instead of grepping a file, we're actually just grepping text. And in this example, it just so happens to be, right, that that text happens to be the same as the file, right? But this concept can be applied in other places. So if we go back and we cd to our home directory, let's go ahead and use a command we used earlier. We use that find iname git, right? What if we did find iname git and we just did pipe grep git, right? This kind of gives us a little bit of help because look, now it is highlighting in this output everywhere is where we actually found git. So it can kind of give you a little bit of a visual indication of where this thing lives, right? Another couple handy ways that we can use pipe and grepping together. If I cd back to my home directory here and I type in history. Okay, I can see I've run 188 commands on this machine, right? What if I just wanted to get back a certain subset of commands, right? What if I wanted to search my history for something specific? Like let's say I want to know every time I've used chmod, for example. What I can do is history, because again, we agree that by using history, it produces us a textual output. And I can use pipe to use it as input for grep. So I'll do history, pipe, grep, and I'll do chmod, right? And now look at this, I've condensed my history down significantly, right? So instead of having 188 entries, I have like six or eight entries in here, right? And they're all chmod commands I can easily reference. This is an awesome use case for using that grep command. So now we have a few different tools in our toolbox that we can use both for searching the file system, searching through files, and searching through and eliminating certain things in output to just kind of help investigate what's going on. So that's some of the use cases for pipe, search, find, and grep.